it is the will of God that none of us should be left out of the grace of salvation by lack of knowledge. This is why he sends the packages of information through dreams, prophecies, and visions so that by wisdom and understanding, we can correctly apply that knowledge to get away from the destructive agenda of the devil and align ourselves to the supreme will of the Lord which leads us unto salvation. This is why although dreams are at different levels, everyone is a dreamer, including non-believers, because it is the will of the Lord to include everyone into the agenda of salvation. He wants to save individuals, he wants to save families, he wants to save communities, he wants to save the entire world. And this is why he empowers people with information through dreams so that by understanding they can apply that knowledge, they can work on that information and be saved. That's the will of the Lord. So it is the agenda of the Lord to save everybody. Also, the dream gift is as common as mankind because God wants to deal with everyone personally. You see, the consummation of relationship is communication. When you are in a relationship, you expect communication from both sides of the relationship. When you pray to God, you are talking to him. When he shows you dreams, he is talking to you. So we dream also in order to enjoy the relationship we have with the Lord. So God gives us the gift of dreams so that we can consummate, we can consume the benefits of the relationship that we have with him through this communication. So when you pray, you are talking to the Lord and when God shows you dreams, he's talking to you. When you are seeing a vision, the Lord is talking to you. When you are receiving a prophet, the Lord is talking to you. But not everyone can be a prophet. This is why he has given a gift of dreams to everyone. So that each and every person can enjoy God at a personal level. You can say, yes, I prayed to God and he answered me. I talked to him and he talked back to me. And that will motivate you to continue praying to continue believing in this God. So dreams bring God closer to us. Bring his voice closer to us so that when we are challenged and in a dilemma, we should know that the Lord has not forsaken us. He's still with us. Hallelujah. Amen. Am I speaking to you? So by dreams you are able to sense the presence of God. By dreams you are able to identify his voice. You are able to know that although I am challenged, my Redeemer is with me. So a dream gives comfort. It gives assurance. It gives you prospects for tomorrow. You come to know to say, ah, I think my tomorrow is possible because I dreamt about it. This is why the Lord gives us the gift of dreams to every man, even non-believers, so that they can have an opportunity to know the will of God and by it, from their ways to the ways of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So now I want us to go into the next chapter where we want to understand how we can grow the gift of dreams and benefit from it. I want to answer that question. How can we grow the gift of dreaming and benefit from it as much as possible. In, in simple ways, what is it that can motivate God to continue entrusting you with information on a daily basis? What is it that can motivate the heavens to continue whispering to you through dreams every day? So, I want us to go to the book of Daniel, chapter 7. On the table I gave you, book of Daniel, chapter 7 from verse 1 to verse 3. The Bible is saying, In the first year of Beshazzar, king of Babylon, Daniel had a dream 
and visions of his head while on his bed. Then he wrote them the dream down, telling the main facts. Leave it there. Leave it there. Put it back. Let me take it again. In the first year of Belshazzar, king of Babylon, Daniel had a dream and visions of his head while on his bed. Then he wrote down the dream, telling the main facts. He wrote down the dream, telling the main facts. Next verse. Next verse. Daniel spoke saying, I saw in my vision by night, and behold, the four winds of heaven were stirring up the great sea. You can have time to continue reading that, but I want to emphasize on the first verse. The Bible says Daniel had a dream in the night while he was on his bed, and when he woke up, he wrote down his dreams, emphasizing on the main facts of the dream. emphasizing on the main facts of the dream. In other words, this was a man that knew how significant dreams are. He knew how important dreams are and how much God communicates to his people through dreams so that his people can be aligned to his perfect will. So when he received a dream from the Lord, he did not just ignore the dream. He showed seriousness towards the dream by jotting it down, by writing it down. And he emphasized the main facts of the dream so that he must not forget it and make sure that he does only that which the Lord had instructed through the dream. The book of John chapter 16, from verse 12. The book of John chapter 16, verse 12. The Bible is saying, I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. I still have many things to tell you, but you cannot handle them right now. This is the voice of frustration from the Lord Jesus Christ, the counselor, the teacher, the way maker, the one who dedicated his life to the salvation of humankind. He came here to do every necessary thing in order to save mankind, to lead mankind from their individual destructive will and align them to the will of the Lord. And yet, before he left this world, he spoke a statement of frustration. He said, I have a lot to tell you. I've got a lot to instruct you. I've got a lot to guide you. But right now, you cannot bear them. You cannot handle them. Your capacity to handle the information that I have is so low to an extent that although it is my desire to tell you more, I can stop here. This was a statement of frustration from a teacher who was willing to deposit more knowledge in his students. More information in his listeners. He was demotivated. He said, how I wish I continued to speak. How I wish I continued to teach. How I wish I continued to give you information so that you can be saved at a deeper level. But your capacity, your capacity is frustrating me. You cannot bear the information that I'm giving you right now. Maybe when the Holy Spirit comes, he may then continue to reveal to you the secrets of heaven. But I was sent here so that I can teach you the whole package of heaven. But your capacity is frustrating the measure of liberation. The measure of knowledge that I have to give. You see, when the Lord is giving you information through a dream, he will only continue giving you more information when he notices how much you honor that information even by writing it down. He will continue revealing himself more to you when he sees how committed you are to what he's giving you as information. 
If he is telling you things, if he is revealing things to you, if he is giving you knowledge, but it seems you don't care about that knowledge, he will withdraw himself and the knowledge he carries. He will wait for a better day when you have grown your capacity to handle more. It means, therefore, your greatness can be postponed. Not because God is not ready to make you great today, but because your capacity, your seriousness, your focus and commitment to this revelation of the Lord is so low. It is the will of the Lord for us to be great right now, in this season. It is the will of the Lord for us to testify in this season. It is the will of the Lord for us to do well in this season. It is the will of the Lord for us to prosper in this time. This is why he's giving us prospering information. This is why he's giving us knowledge, equipping us with the ability of salvation. But we may postpone our greatness. We may postpone the measure of his salvation upon our lives when we lack commitment and honor towards the information and knowledge that he gives us. The Bible says, my people are being destroyed because they don't know. For lack of knowledge, they are perishing every day. It means the moment information is given to you, it is an opportunity for you to move away from destruction and to salvation. It is an opportunity for you to move from the level where you are and be where God wants you to be. When information is revealed to us, when knowledge is given to us, we receive an empowerment for the next level. But here is Jesus saying, how I wish I gave you more knowledge, more information, but you cannot handle it right now. So I have to postpone what you could have received today. Maybe when the Holy Spirit comes, you may then be ready to handle it. It means giants of yesterday are still weak people today because they have not understood what the Lord is about to do in their lives. Prosperous people, big testimonies of yesterday are still wallowing in poverty right now because they have not paid attention to what God is trying to communicate in their lives through dreams. So the moment God notices that you don't care about what he tells you, you don't take notice of the information he gives you, you don't differentiate facts from opinions, he will leave you in ignorance. And that's how you continue being destroyed. What does a wise Christian do? They do like what Daniel was doing. When they wake up from a dream, they write down. They put down the facts regarding the will of God in their lives, in their community, in their nation and the whole world. And by so doing, God and the heavens are noticing that this person is mature enough and can handle more. Whatever you don't honor depreciates. That's the law of life. It is only the things that you honor, that appreciate, that gain value in your life. The moment you lose honor towards a thing, it depreciates away from your life. This is why some people used to receive powerful dreams, but they no longer dream right now. Some people used to receive powerful revelations, but they no longer remember their revelations right now. Because God noticed that these are not serious people. These are not committed to what I want to do in this life through them. So he withdrew the gift. And as a result, we keep on being fought by the devil, taking us unawares, and we call our lives events accidents. And yet God could have empowered us before those events take place. For lack of commitment and honor to the information which God reveals through dreams, destinies have been shattered. Greatness has been postponed. A future that was bright has been engulfed with darkness right now because someone was not serious with the knowledge that came through dreams. 
God knew that this young man Joseph is so committed to the dreams that are revealed through the, through, 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 through the Holy Spirit, through the angels. This is why he even gave him responsibility to rescue Jesus away from Egypt, from, 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 from Israel to Egypt. God knew that this young man, Joseph, is committed to the information and knowledge that I'm giving him through dreams. He's honoring my instructions through dreams. This is why he continued speaking to him regarding the life of Jesus Christ and how he must be preserved from danger. If Joseph took the first dream he had about the paternity of Jesus, where the angel said, don't divorce your wife, this is from the Holy Spirit. If he took that for granted, if he did not consider the facts, God could have had no reason to continue showing him dreams regarding the warfare of Jesus. When the Lord notices that you are serious and you have begun to take note of the facts of the dreams he gives you, he will give you more information. He will give you more information. So a lot of people right now have lost their gift of dreaming because of lack of seriousness and honor for the information that comes through dreams. Why should God continue giving you information which you don't care about? Why should the heavens continue entrusting you with knowledge which you don't put to use? Knowledge which you don't regard as important. So what are you supposed to do if you want to grow your gift of dreams? You must have your dream diary with you. As you go to sleep, you must have somewhere to write every dream that God shows you. And those dreams which God shows you in the night become your prayer points when you wake up. You pray towards the will of the Lord in order to become a perfect Christian. Most of our prayers right now are selfish individual prayers. They are prayers that are in pursuit of our individual will because we don't know the perfect will of the Lord. A dream comes to reveal to you a perfect will of God regarding your life situation. So that as you pray, you must pray according to God's will. So dreams resemble God's will. When you take them serious, you know what to pray about. Am I speaking to you? You know what to pray about. You know in this season in which I'm passing right now, God wants me to pray this kind of prayer because he gave me information through dreams. So you don't pray according to a situation. You don't pray according to what you are passing through. You pray according to God's will for your life. What is God's will for us? Salvation. And how do we come to know about it? Through dreams, through prophecies, through revelations or visions. So it is my expectation that from today, every serious Christian must have a diary in which they write their dreams. Because dreams are God's will. If you cannot take note of God's will, then you don't love God. Imagine you are face to face with Jesus. And he's telling you to say, how I wish I could give you more. But you cannot handle it. How would you feel? And that's how God looks at us. He says, how I wish I could reveal more information to her, to him. But she lacks recognition of my facts through dreams. Maybe late. It means destinies are being postponed. Testimonies are being postponed. Greatness is being postponed, is being withheld. What you could have become will have to wait for another moment. What a tragedy. 
God wants you to succeed now. This is why he's instructing you through dreams now. God wants you to have a breakthrough now. This is why he's giving you information through dreams about your breakthrough now. Now, there are some people that will receive information from a dream, but they suffer from procrastination. That attitude of saying, I'll do it later. Now is not convenient. I'll wait for a better moment. The moment you are procrastinating, you are simply saying, it is not my time for you to have given me such knowledge. You could have waited. It means you are postponing God's time in your life. You are going against God's will which he showed you through the knowledge of dreams. You are saying, Lord, I don't deserve it through this time. Maybe later on. And yet he showed you so that you can do it in this season. Remember, if a dream is coming through you, it means God's will has been arranged to manifest only through you. If you are the one receiving the vision, you are the one receiving the dream, it means there is no one quite like you who is suitable to be a carrier of God's will in this world. So when you procrastinate, you are delaying God. You are postponing his agenda in your community, in your nation. And when God notices that this person is frustrating my agenda, which I want to happen now, now, he will now withdraw that gift from you and share it with another person who is committed enough the Bible actually says, to those that have, more shall be given. To those that don't have, even the little they have will be withdrawn from them. This is why you will find that some are prophets, but they are also being given a lot of gifts of dreaming. Because they are utilizing what they have, and God is so happy to see his work progress through the gifts. And so much so that he can now withdraw the gift that was yours and add it to the prophet. So that he can dream and direct people according to God's will. How do you show God that you are serious about the information he's giving you? When you take note of it. When you write it down. You know when you're a teacher and you see students with notebooks and pens in their hands. You know I can teach more because whatever I'm teaching is making sense. But if I'm a teacher, I'm teaching, but no one is writing. I'll stop teaching because I think I'm wasting my time. These things I'm saying are not making sense to these people. I must find another time perhaps when they are motivated to learn. The Holy Spirit is a teacher. And he can be frustrated by our lack of capacity to learn more. He can withhold his knowledge from us. If we don't show that we're interested enough. So having somewhere to write is enough proof. Enough indication to the Holy Spirit, to the teacher that I'm ready to teach me more. That's number one. Number two. Most people right now that have got the gift of dreaming. They'll tell you. That I do dream, but I don't quite remember most of my dreams. If I've got an episode of dreams, I'll remember maybe just one or two in that episode. Yes, we may blame it on the devil because his agenda is to steal information from you so that you remain ignorant of God's will. To pursue your destructive path. His aim is to steal, to kill, and to destroy. He may make you forget your dreams so that you forget God's will for your life. And the moment you have forgotten God's will for your life, you cannot choose a perfect choice. And that's what it means to be destroyed. Because people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge, the lack of God's will upon their lives. 
So the devil and his demons of forgetfulness can come and take away the information that you were given through dreams. But how do you counterattack his agenda of stealing from you? You remain awake. You put strategies that must prepare you against his agenda of stealing from you. How do you remember your dreams? You remember your dreams by staying awake most of the times in the season of the night. So that each time you are waking up in the night, you are remembering the last episode as God continues to reveal more to you. So a serious dreamer, someone who understands that dreams resemble destinies, will wake up a number of times during the night. Because most of the dreams which we remember are those that we dreamt just before we woke up. That which is still in our conscience is what we remember. So you may have a lot of dreams in a night, but remember only the last episode of the dreams because that is still fresh in your consciousness and that's what you remember. Then you say, ah, I had a lot of dreams, but I can only remember this one which happened just before I woke up. What does that tell you? For you to remember most of the dream episodes, you need to have episodes of sleeping and waking up. So you deliberately set on your alarm to wake up three or four times during the night. And each time you are waking up, you are remembering that which is stuck to your consciousness and you write it down. It means instead of remembering only one dream, you may wake up from a night, from a sleep, with four or more episodes being remembered. And the more you do that, the more of God's will in your heart. The greatest tragedy that can happen to a dreamer is when the dream has eluded your mind due to forgetfulness. When that which God informed you about can no longer be remembered. It's a tragedy. Similarly, if God shows you a vision as a prophet and somehow you have lost sight of the vision, it's tragic because destinies will perish just because there's no knowledge. People will suffer because there will be no direction. It means if I'm a prophet, I must be very serious to take note of how God speaks to me. So that each time he speaks to me, even in a whisper, I don't take it for granted. If I'm a dreamer in the same manner, I must regard my dreams highly. So that I don't miss the will of God in my life. And that happens by writing down the dreams and by remembering them. But for you to remember your dreams, you have to understand your human nature. That when we receive information, there's some information that comes in our conscious mind and some that goes to the subconscious mind. And the, the knowledge that have not yet gone into our subconsciousness may not easily be remembered. And when we understand our human nature, we we'll create a system that can allow us to remember even that which has not been deposited to the depths of our brains. In simple terms, the human brain has got two parts. A part which is like a reception and a part which is like a bedroom. There's some information that comes into the reception but is not allowed into the bedroom. What you need to do now is to make sure that when you wake up, you don't only have the information that came into the bedroom, but you are also able to access that which only came on the reception. 
But how do you acquire that which only came on the reception when you are able to wake up a number of times in the night to remember what you had just dreamt before it is forgotten? So when you wake up a number of moments, you are giving yourself greater chances of remembering what episode of dream God had just shown you. So a serious dreamer, someone who knows that they are being guided by the Lord through dreams, cannot sleep like a baby for eight hours without waking up. You sleep, wake, sleep, wake up, sleep, wake up until morning. From today, as you are listening to me, your gift of dreams is being restored. Amen. You shall dream again in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. You shall dream again in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. From today, from today, I prophesy that gift back to you. I prophesy that gift back to you. I prophesy that gift back to you. Every information that the devil took away from you, I bring it back in your dreams. Every information that the enemy took away from you, I bring it back in your dreams. I bring it back in your dreams. You must dream of your past. You must know where mistakes happened. You must know where the attack took place. You must know where the mistake happened. You must dream about your future. You must understand what is prepared for you. In the name of Jesus, I restore back your dream. I restore back your gift of dreaming. I restore back your gift of dreaming. I restore back your gift of dreaming. I, back gift of dreaming. I bring back to you your ability to dream. When you sleep, whether it's just five minutes, a dream must come and be remembered. You must dream again. 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 You must remember your dreams again. Any demon that has been taking away your dreams, any dream that has any demon that has been stealing your information, any demon that has been stealing your information, I take it out of your life. I bring back your gift of dreaming in the name of G. You must dream again. Before the day starts, the Lord must show you how the day will go through the night. Before the attack comes, the Lord must show you through the dream how the attack is going to happen. Before the opportunity comes, the Lord must show to you a vision of that opportunity so that you choose the right path, so that you choose the right ways, so that you do the will of the Lord and miss no opportunity. I pray as a prophet. I pray as a prophet. I bring back your dream gift. I restore back your dream gift in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. So, your ability to dream is back. Ah. Your ability to dream is back. Your ability to dream is back. In the name of Jesus. It is back. What am I expecting? From tonight, your future shall become so clear. From tonight, your business plan shall become so clear. From tonight, all secrets shall be revealed unto you. In the name of Jesus, whatever they are planning against you shall be revealed in your dream. Whatever they are plotting against you shall be revealed in your dream. You shall become a prophet of your own life. You shall become a prophet of your own house. You shall become a prophet over your children. Nothing shall happen to your children before you know about it. Nothing shall happen to your household before you know about it. Nothing shall happen to your business before you know about it. What am I trying to say? No accidents in your life. No accidents in your life. No accidents in your life. No traps of the enemy in your life. 
Because you see, what we call accidents, to the devil, it's a plan fulfilled. What we call accidents, to the enemy, it's a strategy fulfilled. It's a trap fulfilled. Whatever trap they have set against you, whatever plan they have waged against you, whatever trap they have put on your way, before you get to it, you shall know about it. Before you fall into it, you shall know about it. In the name of Jesus. <laughs> what am I trying to say? If they are planning to bewitch you this night, you shall take a siesta in the noon, and God shall show you a vision that they are coming for you, and you shall be awake to pray against them. When the heralds are planning their attack and they're about to come and capture you and your destiny, the Lord will come in the night. He will tell you, wake up and get away from the place. <laughs> when the future looks very dark, Gabriel shall come in your night and tell you, don't worry, Zachariah. You shall have a child. Am I speaking to you? Angels on assignment must move with you. They must speak in your dreams. They must deposit information that you need to be saved. Maybe there are some guardian angels that were moving with you when you are a baby, but because of your iniquities, they are no longer close to you. I'm pleading for the mercies of the Lord. They must come back in your life. The guardian angels must come back in your life. The guardian angels must come back in your life. The guardian angels must come back in your life. The ministry of angels is a reality. And they must begin to demonstrate their impact through dreams. To each his own angel. To each her own angel. Say, angel of the Lord, get closer to me. Angels of the Lord, get closer to me. Minister in my life. Minister in my life. Speak to my dreams. Jesus, mate.